Welcome to EDP 911 Analytical Approach to Educational Plan. What is the focus of this course? We're going to look at approaches in model building, models the, and educational planning, types of educational models. Now let us look at the approaches in model building. One of such approaches is structuralist approaches in model building. Structural model, that is the first part on the structuralist approach. In using structural model, structural model is the relationship between the latent variables. And it specifies how well some variables could predict some other variables. Which means you have the outcome, the predictor, and the variable that will be predicted. So one has to be through a regressional approach, which means the output of a particular variable will be dependent on the other variable. Also, this could be viewed from regression model, since prediction involves relationship, which means you're looking through the relationship of two different variables. One will be dependent on the other. One output is dependent on the uh, change in the other variable. Again, we look at the relationship from a chain or a path. Hence, it is called path model. When two models are combined, they form structural equation model. At a point, you may have a need to combine two models. And when that happens, we are dealing with structural equation. Let's look at an example as presented by Lomas 1992 on a simple structural equation model. Now, assuming that based upon literature research, a researcher hypothesizes that home background could be a predictor to school achievement, and school achievement could predict career sources. Now, look at the part that is trending here. We're looking at home background, that the type of home background a child goes through could predict what the achievements, is academic achievements in school. And at the same time, the achievement in school could predict the type of career or the how successful it will be in career. Now, this is a simple hypothesis. What do we do next? The researcher needs to define the concepts. Because when you talk about home background, the whole background may look vague. People may read different meaning to home background. At the same time, when you look at the school achievement, the school achievement could be read differently. What kind of achievement are we really looking out for in the school? Then you come to uh, the career sources. How do we define sources in career? So to do this, what do we need to do? We have the home background now. You have the school achievement and you have the career sources. So these are the variables we now have to interpret because if you do not break down these variables, we may not be able to know exactly what make up of home background, what make up of school achievement, and what make up career sources. Now, if not, they will be vague. So, so maybe not to be vague, what do you do? You define them. And that is why we have this right here. And in this regard, what are we going to do you have the home background, you have the school achievement, you have the career sources. That is the path analysis. Now, the factor analysis is describing what each of them represents. If you look at the home background, it is being said that the socioeconomic status, father's education, father's occupation is forming the home background. Whereas if this were not defined, somebody may look at the home training to be the home background or maybe the place you are from maybe your state of origin or their rebound. But here it is now spelled out that it's not a state of origin or you train the type of training you receive from home. However, it has to do with the father's education, father's occupation. So you see that it is spelled out. Then looking at the school achievement, we are looking at three different uh, subjects here. We are looking at math, science, and English. They are coming to career. We are looking at the net worth then the salary and job satisfaction. So with this that you see that there is a breakdown. So with this, we'll be able to have the path analysis along with the, um, the factor analysis. Now let us look at measurement model, which is the second type of structuralist model. 
when you are looking at the measurement model, what are we talking about here? Here, this model examines the latent variable and they are measured. The latent variable are the hidden variables. Like the example we just saw, we're talking about the home. We're looking at the home background. The, there is a hidden variable in the home background. Those were the ones that we are now spelled out in the factor analysis. Because if you leave it as home background and you want to conduct a research on that, you may not like you are not likely to come up with an accurate result. Now let's look at the questions that must come to mind when you are using the measurement variable. These are the questions. So are there causal or effect indicators? Are there multiple or single indicator of the latent variable? Is the latent variable continuous or not continuous? Are the indicators continuous or not continuous? Does more than one latent variable influence the indicator? So these are things you need to look out for because when you, let, let's see, go back to our previous example, you're talking about the home background, you're talking about the school achievement. In the school achievement, you discover that we spent on just three subjects. But let's assume you are looking at just one way because you have to think and look around what are those things that are really affecting the main indicator, the variable that influences the main indicator? So with this, in the past example, the variable that influences the main indicator in the case of the home background has to do with the father's occupation, has to do with the father's uh, education. So these are some of the variables that influence that indicator. Now, again, to test the measurement model, you usually saturate the structural model by allowing all the latent to correlate. Then any misfit in the measurement, then any misfit is the measurement model. So if there is a misfit that is not correlated, that is your measurement model. Now let us look at this again. The measurement model has to fit to assess the fit of the structural model. So if there is no fit in the measurement model, therefore you will not be able to assess the structural model. Now, what is the structured equation modeling? This is the third method that we are exposed to when you are using the uh, structuralist approach in building models. The third one is the structured equation modeling. When you talk about the structured equation modeling, it's a statistical technique for testing and estimating causal relationship using a combination of statistical data and qualitative causal assumptions. Now, let us look at structural equation model, often represented as SEM, allows both confirmatory and exploratory modeling. Thus, it is suited to both theory testing and theory development. Modeling usually starts with a hypothesis represented by a model. Now, let us look at among the strengths of SEM is the ability to construct latent variables, variables which are not measured directly, but are estimated in the model from several measured variables, each of which is predicted to tap into the latent variable. This allows the modeler to explicitly capture the unreliability of measurement in the model, which in theory allow the structural relations between latent variable to be accurately estimated. Factor analysis, path analysis, and regression all represent special cases of SEM. These are special cases that are so let us look at the steps that could be used. Let us assume we have SEM that is structured equation, and we have uh, two things that we need to look out for when you are performing steps in, when you want to uh, analyze SEM. Now, what do you do? There are two variables that are involved. You have the exogenous variable, and the second is the endogenous variable. So when you are performing this kind of uh, modeling, you must have two variables. One is exogenous and the other one is endogenous. Now, when you're talking about the exogenous variable, what is the effect? It's not affected by other variables in the system. This kind of variable, when you have a variable that is not affected by any other variable in the system, it means that is exogenous variable. But again, the variable, other variable regress on. 
The exogenous variable is the variable that other variable regressor, which means it determines the output of the other variable. But on the other hand, when you look at the endogenous, the endogenous, the output is dependent on other variables. In this case, dependent variable regress on IV, independent variable. So if the exogenous is the dependent variable, the endogenous will be the dependent variable because the output of the dependent variable will not be dependent on the independent variable. That is, it is being predicted, the dependent variable is being predicted by the independent variable. That is what we mean by the outcome being predicted. So it is the outcome of that variable that will now predict what will happen next. Now let's all look at how we can distinguish some of these uh, models. We are looking at the structural model and in the structural model, because we talked about the structural model, because they are the two basic models when you are talking about the, uh, the structured equation modeling, whereby showing potential causal dependencies between endogenous and exogenous variables. That is the structural model. Why the other model, which is the measurement model, now gives us shows the relationship between variables and the indicators. So one is showing the uh, showing the potential causal dependency between endogenous and exogenous. So which means one regresses on one, and the second one showing the relationship between the variables and the indicators because there must be indicators among the variable, which the indicators is depending the variable is depending on the indicators. So right now, let us quickly look at the other part that we need to look at. For example, here we have another form that we need to see, and that is called estimation of free parameters. When we talk about estimation of free parameters, what are we talking about here? In this regard, first, before we come into this, it is important to note that the structure, the uh, structured equation model, which is the SEM, is more general than regression. In particular, a variable can act as both independent and independent variable. Before we come into this uh, estimation of parameters, this is what will be implied. Because in that SEM, you discover that if a particular variable is dependent, that variable will equally stand as independent variable. Also, a modeler will often specify a set of theoretical plausible models in order to assess whether the model proposed is the best of the set of models. Now, let us come to what we have here now, estimation of free parameters. Parameter estimation is done by comparing the actual covariance matrix representing the relationship between variables with the estimated covariance matrix of the best fitting model. This is obtained through numerical maximization of a fit criterion as provided by maximum likelihood estimation weighted least square or symbolically distributed free methods when we are looking at the symbolical method of eight as how it is being distributed this is often accomplished by using a specialized sem analysis program of which we several exist the another one that we look at is the assessment of fits. Assessment of fits is a basic task in SEM modeling, forming the basis for which accepting or rejecting model, and more usually accepting one com competing model over another. The output of SEM programs include matrix of the estimated relationship between variables in the model and assessment of fits, especially calculating how similar the predicted data are to matrix containing the relationship. And one way in which you could measure this is the use of the sky screen, whereby you have the observed and you now have to compare it, a fundamental measure of fit used in the calculation, calculation of many other fit measures. Conceptually, it is a function of the sample size and the difference between the observed covariance matrix and the model covariance matrix. So in this case, you discover for each measure of fit, a decision as to what represents good enough fit between model and data must reflect other contextual factors such as sample size, large sam uh, samples, make the chi-square test overly sensitive. So in this case, when you're looking at how uh, fit 
a particular parameter is, you will have to look at the chi-square. It's one of the methods that could be used. Now, let's look at another method, model modification. When you talk about model modification, you need to, uh, model modification may need to be modified in order to improve the fit, thereby estimating the most likely relationship between variables. Many fits, those result from adding an additional part to the model Modification that improve model fit are then flagged as potential. Changes that can be made to the model. In addition, to imp improve in the model fit, it's important that the modification also make theoretical sense. Now, these are the different form of models we have when we are trying to come up with a modeling factor. Now, let us look at how these models can be interpreted and communicated. How do you interpret interpretation and communication of model? The model is then interpreted and claimed about the constructs are made based on the best fitting model. Caution should always be taken when making claims of casualty, even when experimentation or time ordered studies have been done. The term causal model must be understood to mean a model that convey causal assumption, not necessarily a model that produces validated causal conclusion. Collecting data at multiple time points and using an experimental or quasi-experimental design can help rule out certain rival hypotheses, but even a randomized experiment can rule out all such threats to causal inter interference. So good fit by a model consists with one causal hypothesis does not rule out equally good fit by another model consists with a different causal hypothesis. However, careful research design can help distinguish such rival hypotheses. So whatever type of model we need to do, it is always more appropriate to come up with a hypothesis which will serve as a guide on what you need to do.